Good evening, you're watching SG News, I'm Hugh Riches. Tonight, jail for a mother who concealed her dead baby, preserving the Beverly Gates in Hull, and a new gay, a new name for Dong Energy. And joining me on the sofa tonight, Jason Carlion, uh, will be teaching secondary schools how to restart hearts. But before that, Dave Carter tells me about a new sport launched in Lincolnshire. A mother who disposed of the body of her dead baby in a drain has been sentenced to jail for 12 months by Grimsby Crown Court today. Sinead Layfield had previously admitted trying to conceal the birth of the baby by hiding the baby's body in a drain outside her family home on Scartho Road in Grimsby. This happened between August the 3rd and the 13th in 2013. The body was discovered by Layfield's father and a plumber. Dong Energy has today unveiled plans to change the company name. About time too, somebody had a word. The new company name will be Orsted. It follows the company's transition from fossil fuels to green energy, along with the recent divestment of upstream oil and gas production. The new name, Orsted, is a reference to Danish scientist Hans Christian Orsted. He pioneered several major scientific events, including the discovery of electromagnetism in 1820. Today, Dong Energy has called an extraordinary general meeting to ask the company's shareholders to approve the name change. A protective layer will soon be added to one of Hull's most famous landmarks. Students from Hull College, along with industry experts, are to apply a protective layer to Beverly Gate to prevent damage from the weather and people climbing on it. The newly refurbished site was recently in the news as children had been seen playing on the 17th century historic monument. But building conservator Nigel Copsey, who oversees the work, says he sees no issue with children playing on the gate. I think it is inevitable that people will do that and young people will do that. And, uh, and I might be speaking out of turn. I, I, is that such a bad thing, really? I mean, it's here to be used and enjoyed. And we can, as long as they're not doing damage, why wouldn't they do that? The worst thing would be that it became some kind of a fortification that people couldn't uh, actually enjoy. And so conservation has to be part of the real world. And you can't cast these things in aspic. It is what it is. It's survived many many hundreds of years there's no real reason why it can't go on surviving those hundred for many hundreds of years more and we're taking steps hopefully that that mean that if there is any damage done it will be done to new brickwork which has none of the significance that the old stuff does we're going to be doing the cleaning uh, this week and uh, just initial cleaning and then uh, then it will be repointed by a, a, a team of conservation brick bricklayers and, and masons but but after that uh, students apprentices from Hull College will be coming and because English Heritage would like a, a three new courses of brickwork to protect it from everyday use I, I would say and from the weather so that if any damage is done it will be done to the new brickwork and not to the original fabric. Four men have been arrested this weekend after reports of hair coursing in Lincolnshire. The arrests were part of Operation Galileo, which saw officers from the Lincolnshire Rural Crime Team patrolling the roads last weekend. New all-terrain vehicles and drones were used in the operation. The drones were used to find suspected hair courses and off-road officers were able to track them down. The churches of Hull have come together for their own City of Culture project. The exhibition, called Battered and Birthed, goes on display in Prince's Quay later this month with a selection of pictures from the Methodist Art Collection. Leanne Kensett is the exhibition's coordinator. As part of the City of Culture, the churches in Hull, as a gift to the people of Hull, um, decided to bring a selection of work from the Methodist Art Collection um, we've selected pieces that we feel relate to Hull, to the idea of being battered about by the sea, by life, by circumstances, um, and then being birthed, finding a home, finding a place of safety where you belong. Um, and we've put this collection together and we're exhibiting it from the end of October, from the 21st of October, up until New Year's Eve. Um, and we're inviting people to come and spend time in the space and to reflect on the art and to what it's saying to them. We have work from well-known artists like Graeme Sutherland and Elizabeth Frink 
um, and then some lesser known artists as well. We've got a real variety of mediums that have been used, so there's um, oils, there's watercolours, there's pencils, there's a real selection of art to see. And anyone interested in volunteering in that exhibition should head to the Believe in Hull website. On tonight's Hot Topic, I'll be talking to Cleethorpe's MP Martin Vickers uh, in the Conservative interest. Here's what he had to say about the timing of the next general election. I mean, she can lose a vital vote and then go back the following day and she would get a, a, a support for a motion of confidence. And equally, if there are some very contentious votes, she could do what John Major did with the Maastricht vote and say, just that, I'm coming back tomorrow, it's the same motion, but it is a motion of confidence and if we lose, I resign. Uh, so that it inevitably uh, makes the, pulls the troops together and, and uh, yes, she could lose some votes, but she won't lose a vote of confidence, not, why, not in particular, not while she's got the DUP support. And I'm joined now by Dave Carter, who's introducing a new sport to Lincolnshire and who has arrived armed, but I hope not dangerous. Dave, welcome. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having us. If you want to give us a quick description, it's not really a new sport, it's, but it's, it's being revived in Lincolnshire. Tell us what it is. It's a sport called bell target shooting. It's uh, a bell target that we have here in front of us that is hung at shoulder height off the floor. The shooter stands 18 feet away from the target and has to get a bell through the target, which is a, a little hole in the centre of the target. Well, I think we can sort of show here yep. that inside the hole in the wood there's a disc of metal with target lines. That's right. right. And then in the hole, uh, how wide is that it's hole? It's three-eighths of an inch, the, the hole, and behind that sits the bell. So they have to get the target, they the pellet through the target from 18 feet. Once they've done it once, they have to do it another five times. This is very Odysseus with the axe heads, isn't it, at the end that's of the Odyssey, right. shooting an arrow <laughs> through the holes. Yes. And it's, and, and it's, that, that's tiny. That's a very, very small hole, 18 feet away. 18 feet's a long way when you're it trying is. to hold your... Your, it is. Your front hand still. We have been out at one of the fairs and a gentleman came along and uh, we said to him, do you want to have a go? And he said, no, no, I'll, I'll have a go later on. Anyway, he came back and had a go and conceded to get four bells, one after the other. It's the first time we've seen it done. Three is quite an average, but four, and he just missed the fifth one by a smidgens of an inch. So. But it's, it's carried out in the, the pubs and clubs in Lincolnshire. We've got five pubs at the moment that uh, we're running this in. Anybody's free to come along and have a go. We've got all the equipment. The equipment that you can see on the table yep, is we'll have a look at that in a moment, is pr uh, provided by one of our sponsors. Uh, so they don't need any equipment. If they have their own equipment, then bring it along as long as it's a .177 air rifle or air pistol. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you mentioned it's something going on at pubs, I suppose they're sort of hanging up in the pub car park and things like that, and it's all very safety conscious of course. It is, it's all fully risk assessed and it takes part either in the, uh, the bars or in the restaurants. Do you know which, which can you, do you want to name the pubs so yes, people can we go have, and find out? we have the White Hart in Lissington, we have the White Hart Inn in Ludford, we have the Black Horse in Donington on Bain, the Hennage at Hainton and the Crossroads in East Barkworth. Okay. If people want to find out more, they want to know when the dates are that these, this is going to be available. There's a website. They can go on to www.dc-a at, uh, sorry, .co.uk. Let's have a look at this weapon. This is a rather okay. remarkable looking object. This is an air arms, what we call a PCP. It's gas powered. I can see the, the barrel here, which contains the gas. We have the safety flag in it, so it indicates so that's that it's safe to use. So all the way use. down the barrel and through the breech, and so we, you know that there's nothing... Good. That makes me feel a bit better. <laughs> and to load it, you roll the pellet into the, the top, push the bolt forward, and then you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, this is a rather more modern uh, piece of technology than the original weapons that people would have used when they're playing this, this game. That's right. This one's supplied by a company called Air Arms that supply us with the rifles and the pistols. So if anybody yeah. wants to come along, as I say, equipment's there to be used. Um, we've been very fortunate that the Northern Shooting Show has sponsored the league. So the uh, purpose is to, to get the league going in January next year. We're doing some uh, trials at the moment and uh, days at the various pubs, so there's something going on most weeks. Uh, so if people want to have a look at the website, they can see where they want to go. The older guns, the first guns were started around 1890, and 
one of the names was called Lincoln Jeffries, which I think is quite Certainly good to come back. Appropriate. And then we have BSA and Webley Scott. And the guys have got a bit of a competition going along to see who can go back the furthest with air rifles. We're back to 1939 at the moment. Now, the, the, this, this bell particularly was uh, introduced in the early part of the 20th century because people didn't think that the, um, the, country, the men of the country were good enough shots. That's right. They, they did two things. They introduced the miniature rifle clubs for the landed gentry and the workers. And then they started off bell target shooting in the industrial areas of the Midlands. Shall, shall we put our weapons down, Dave? I think it could be a good idea. Uh, uh, feeling either a bit James Bond or just a bit <laughs> mad there, uh, doing that. Uh, and as you say, people come along, they, do, they don't want to do it before, and they do it for the first time, and, 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 and they suddenly discover a completely new love. There's a sport that they can get involved in, which is enjoyable and, happily, close to beer. That's right, and we also, it, it's open to all age groups, so the youngest person we've got is a young lady who comes along that averages one or two bells every time she comes along, and up to, I think, 85 is the oldest person and we've got taken from. you can do it from a wheelchair, you don't have to be particularly athletic or mobile. No. Dave, thank you so much for coming in, I'm sure this will take off, it looks great fun, thank you Thank very you very much. much indeed. Join me after the break, Dan will bring us all the sports news, and I'll be talking to Jason Carlyon about restarting hearts in schools. Welcome back, you're watching Estrue News. Still to come, Dan brings us all the latest sports news and I'll be chatting to Jason Carlyon about restarting hearts in schools. <music> 80 homes in Grimsby will benefit from a facelift from Shoreline Housing this winter. It's part of the company's or the association's latest improvement programme. The £190,000 decoration scheme will involve windows, doors and chimney repairs, as well as new fascias, gutters and downpipes where needed. An earlier decoration scheme, costing £380,000, restored 150 homes earlier this summer. The work is expected to begin at the end of October. Shoreline is contacting all the households that benefit. A North Lincolnshire church roof will be saved thanks to the Heritage Lottery Fund. St Ethelreda's Church in West Halton has secured £182,000 for the replacement of its nave roof. The funding follows a lead theft in 2010. The project aims to replace the temporary nave roof in place since 2010 with a copper-coated stainless steel roof. There will also be a drainage system and improved access to the church from the village via a footpath. Now I'm joined by Jason Carlyon, who's here to talk about uh, his mission to promote the importance of restarting hearts in Yorkshire's uh, schools and everywhere else's schools as well. Jason, welcome. Thanks very Hello. much for coming in. What is this project that you've been working on? So Restart a Heart Day is a day that we started four years ago in 2014, following the European Resuscitation Council designating the 16th of October as Restart a Heart Day. And what they did in this country in the very first year was the sent a DVD and a lesson plan to all schools and encouraged them to teach the children CPR. What we felt was missing was actually the hands-on practical element of the training, so we devised a programme whereby we would go in and visit schools on Restart Heart Day and teach the children CPR. Uh, now this is CPR, we know what it, we think we know what it is anyway, it's the, the, the pumping of the lower part of the chest just to keep the heart moving and the blood going around the body, oxygen getting to where it needs to go keep doing that until an ambulance man or a doctor turns up and you can save a person's life. Absolutely. What we know from research and evidence around the world is that bystander CPR dramatically improves the chance of survival. It can double the chance of survival for a patient and every minute that goes by without CPR being performed, the patient's chance of survival drops by 10%. So the mission is to encourage people to learn how to, to do CPR and overcome some of the fears that they have about doing it. And one of those fears is they might be doing some damage. Yeah, and what we'd say to people is actually you can't make the situation any worse. At that point in time, the patient is in cardiac arrest, so their heart's not beating. They are effectively dead. So if you don't perform CPR, that patient will die. So if you're worried about breaking a rib or something like that, then a, a live person with a broken rib is better than a dead person with a Absolutely. beautiful rib cage. If you do effective CPR, there is actually a very good chance that you will crack a rib. 
How many people, how many uh, pupils have you taught this skill to in Yorkshire? So we started in 2014 and we taught 11,500 in one day. Uh, in one day? In one day, thousand. yeah. And since then we've taught a further 40,000. And on October the 16th this year, just in Yorkshire alone, we'll teach another 30,000. Difficult to make an estimate, but how many lives might that have saved and continue to save? It, it is difficult to estimate and it's difficult to quantify because the, the data is populated so, so late afterwards. But what we do know, certainly in the, in the Yorkshire region, is that bystander CPR rates have increased and cardiac arrest survival has, has increased as well. So it's crucial that people get involved, learn how to do CPR and perform CPR if necessary if somebody collapses in front of them. Uh, what age groups are learning this skill? So we're teaching secondary schools, uh, but anybody can learn. Anybody can learn the, the principles, these videos online of babies performing CPR. Clearly they can't do it effectively, um, but anybody can learn the theory and the principles of how to do CPR. And the fact is, I mean, one of the things you need to do it properly, the heart massage part, is a bit of heft. So I guess that if you, you're a small child, you're not going to have the... You're not going to have the, the weight. That's right. You, ne you need the force behind it. You've got to get a compression depth of about five to six centimetres, which is quite a lot when you're pushing against a, a sort of quite rigid rib cage. So it does need somebody a little larger to be able to perform effective CPR. But what I would say is we wouldn't want to put anybody off put performing CPR. So even if somebody's smaller, we would still encourage them Trick to, to do it. The weight right over the stern. Absolutely, yeah. Is anybody, how do the pupils receive this? Are they a little bit squeamish about it or are they, are they enthusiastic? Can they not wait to um, have a chance to pummel seven hells out of their friends' chests? <laughs> They're really enthusiastic and um, to, to some degree, the, the way the lesson's taught, they, they take it quite as a bit of competition against their, their friends that are next to them that are doing it as well. Um, but the, the key thing is it's a really simple lesson to learn. And for them, it takes them out of their normal school day. You know, they're, they're in a hall with us teaching a a practical skill, um, I think they'd rather be doing that than, uh, than studying some of the... Uh and, and you use those sort of plastic dummies with a... That's right, yeah, yeah. It's quite satisfying. I did, I did a first aid course quite recently and it, 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 you get a bit of aggression out, you know, when you're doing, <laughs> you, 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 you're doing that family. I wouldn't encourage getting aggression no, out. <laughs> I don't, but energy, I suppose, yes, but good yeah, energy you know, yeah. is, is what you get out. Uh, it can be tiring, as you said. When do you stop? Well, we would encourage people to keep going until either the patient recovers or the ambulance arrives. We do realise it is tiring, but what, what we do, and certainly we advise our clinicians to do, is every two minutes to change provider, because again, research has shown that... So get your mate to come in and take over and take it in turns to keep the that's CPR right, going. That's when fatigue sets in at the two minutes. That's when the, the effectiveness of the compressions actually drops off, so we encourage swapping over every two minutes. We think of CPR, the other part of it is um, artificial respiration, sort of mm -hmm. the kiss of life of its name. Uh, but is that seen as a bit old-fashioned nowadays? It's still in the guidelines. Um, people do shy away from it simply because when a patient has a cardiac arrest, quite often they will vomit or they'll bite the tongue so there'll be blood in the mouth. Um, so people won't feel inclined to do mouth to mouth. So if they choose not to, that's fine, they just do compression only. Most cardiac arrests out of hospital occur in the home. So what we say to the students is actually you might feel more inclined to do mouth to mouth. In which case, if you're doing mouth to mouth, it's 30 compressions to two breaths. There's some music involved. There is, yes. You you, there's a selection, in fact. There's a, there's a little playlist. There is. If you, you can take your pick, you can choose any, any music that has a beat of between 100 to 120. Uh, some people like Nelly the Elephant, some people prefer Staying Alive. I, I suppose that's a matter of taste, isn't it? A matter of taste and a matter of age, I guess. You've gone international. Yes. Um, the campaign that we started in 2014, we shared with all of our UK ambulance service colleagues, so every ambulance service in the country last year got involved and trained over 150,000 people. This year it's likely to reach in excess of 200,000 and we've also got all of the Australian and New Zealand ambulance services involved as well. If people want to learn how to do CPR, it's, and it really is not difficult, what should they do? Who should they contact? Two things. One, they can either visit our website, so it's www.restartaheart.yas.nhs.uk and we have some videos on there or seek out some of the first aid training providers that are out in the communities. Jason, thank you very much. What a, a very useful work. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. Here's Dan with all the sports. Hull City head coach Leonid Slutsky says his side have been showing signs of a performance like Saturday's 6-1 thrashing of Birmingham well in advance of this weekend. 
Six different goal scorers all netted in the win at the KCOM Stadium and the City bosses praised his players for keeping going for the full 90 minutes. We were very close to this quality of a match, a lot of matches, and we played really well, but not all the matches. Sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes one half, sometimes maybe more, maybe less. And all this week we spoke about we must stability our quality of a game. Not 30 minutes, not one half, all 90 minutes. Grimsby Town's derby clash against Lincoln City on Saturday ended goalless. A game that had limited chances saw the Mariners go closest through a strike by Sam Jones that went just past the post. The game saw the first return to Brundle Park for playoff winner Nathan Arnold since his goal at Wembley. After the game, he said he was thrilled with the reception he received. The Mariners are now in 15th place and face Scunthorpe United tomorrow in a Checker Trade trophy game. Elsewhere, the Iron were unable to beat the only unbeaten team in the Football League, Shrewsbury Town. Paul Hurst's team took the lead in the first half when Stefan Payne bundled the ball over the line. Carlton Morris then sealed the win for Shrewsbury in the 87th minute, leaving them top of the league, whilst the Iron remain in seventh. They have no fresh injury concerns ahead of tomorrow's Lincolnshire derby, and Graham Alexander hopes to be able to give some younger players a chance to play the full 90 minutes. And finally, on to rugby with Hull FC. They were beaten at Headingley by Leeds Rhinos by 18 points to 16 in the playoff semi-final on Friday. This means the black and whites have gone out in the semis in consecutive years, although Gareth Ellis believes they were within touching distance of the dream final against Castleford. And of course, it was his final game for the club. And that's all for the spot. Thank you very much, Dan, and thanks to Dave Carter for coming in. I assure you those guns really were made safe, and it's safety first for all those sports, of course. Uh, and my thanks to Jason as well. As always, if you have a new story you think we should be covering, please get in touch in the usual ways. We look forward to hearing from you with anything you have for us. Uh, and uh, the usual contacts are immediately below me. Uh, TV by Facebook, news at estuary.tv and 01472315553. Uh, I didn't expect to see them quite so quickly. Until tomorrow, from all of us here, good evening. Mm -hmm.